Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode nine of the Together We Grow podcast. I am Paul Main, and I'm here with Tima. Hi, everybody. And this is the podcast where we talk through our experiences of building a home fragrance business here in the UK together as a couple, all the challenges that come with that. But then also we talk quite a lot about strategies and things that will help you grow your home fragrance business. And this is all through our new business, which is the Home Fragrance Academy. Now, earlier this year, we sold our home fragrance businesses so, and we started the Home Fragrance Academy to teach people how to grow and scale their business and ultimately sell it if they wish to. So we talk through all of our successes, everything that we've done that's helped us along the way, and we teach that to everybody. So if you're not a member of the Home Fragrance Academy, why not? Head over to homefragrance.academy, become a member. We'll give you, you'll have access to all of our courses resources, our community, and also you get direct coaching with us as well, which um, is benefiting quite a lot of people at the moment, isn't it? It certainly is. And this, this has been a really lovely experience to do, isn't it? Yeah. Helping as many people as we possibly can. Yeah, we, we love it, don't we? So, um, right. And this episode, episode nine, is all about our marketing toolkit. We're going to talk through seven of the key things that we did in our businesses to help it grow. Shall we get on with it? Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so we are going to crack on with this then. Uh, but before we do that, Tamer's little segment of the week, she's got a win of the week and a quote as well, haven't you? I certainly have. So I'll start with the quote first. So if the plan doesn't work, change the plan, but never the goal. So I quite like that because things crop up in business where you've got to like change your mind and change the direction you're going, but you never want to change the goal because your goal is really important. So it could be to um, like get your first wholesale order. It could be to stock um, your products in your own store. It could be to launch a brand new product, but whatever your goal is, you don't want to change that, but you might need to change and adapt on the fly to get to your goal. Yeah, very good. Okay, and your win of the week? My shout out goes to Brogan from Mountain View Mounts. She's been nominated as a finalist for the 2024 Local Women's Magazine Business Award. Wow. So that is amazing. Congratulations, Brogan. That is incredible work. Yeah, well done indeed. That is very good news. All of these things really do help. You can create some good content around that for your socials. It helps to build credibility for you personally, but also your business as well. So well done. That is some really good news. Okay, so we're going to talk through our marketing toolkit and the seven things that we use uh, in our businesses to help them grow. So number one is the most obvious one for us is social media marketing. That was obviously a key thing for us, wasn't it? It certainly was, yeah. And it was a huge part of everything we did with our home fragrance businesses. And we still do a lot of social media marketing now, don't we? Yeah, we do it for, for Home Fragrance Academy, of course, but also for our clients that we have as well. Um, but the, you know, when we started Cozy Romans, which was our first business, we um, it was a social media led brand, wasn't it? Building that it community was. and all of that kind of stuff, really. Um, and the key success there for us was actually focusing on engagement. Yeah, we wanted to build not just somewhere people can just go and place orders, but we wanted to build a proper community and for it to be like a loyal following and for everybody to really enjoy being there. So we put a lot of time and effort into that. Yeah, we did. Yeah, And the key thing, really, what was something that we learned that so many businesses just do not do, and I don't understand why, is, is being very personable mm -hmm. and showing behind the scenes, showing your face don't just keep trying to sell products showcasing products and all that kind of stuff that's important you need to do that yeah. but it's social media tell a story mm -hmm. talk about the day-to-day -day operating of your business and what you're working on show mm -hmm. glimpses of you making your products packing orders dealing with customers mm -hmm. at your market events all of that kind of stuff all of this on social media really works well and that's what we did wasn't it it was if you're nervous to be on camera you don't have to be directly on the camera talking all the time it can just be filming like different clips piecing them all together and yeah. doing a voiceover <clears throat> to explain what's happening that day yeah absolutely but also being on camera yourself 
Mm. Really does work. It so does. I, it's one of those difficult ones. This is where you're much better at this than me because for me, I'm just going to say, you know, you're nervous to be on camera. Just do That's it. That's unfortunate. Just do it because it will help your business grow. Mm. So what's important to you? Do you want your business to grow? Do you want it to flourish? Do you want to build that engagement and that loyal community? Yeah. Okay. Get on camera then. Yeah, you're more black and white with that, aren't you? Well, yeah, but it, it, it's true though. It is true, yeah. But obviously there's a lot of people that have like severe anxiety about going on camera, so if they could build up to it. Yeah, oh, yeah, I understand that. And mm. it's it's very... And it's a real challenge if you have mm. if you do have severe anxiety, which a lot of people do. It's gonna it is a real challenge to to yeah. overcome these type of things, which help to grow your business. Mm-hmm. You know, because it does work. Mm-hmm. So do it. And if you're unable to do it for whatever reason, then you need to try and think of other ways which will have a similar impact. Yeah. Other ways to grow it. You know, it's um it's a difficult one, isn't it? It certainly is. Yeah, we did a lot of videos, and and the first couple ones obviously were like terrible, weren't they? And we'd like record just walking around the warehouse, for instance. People love that. Yeah. They love seeing behind the scenes what you're doing that day. It doesn't have to be scripted, choreographed, anything. No, just right. walk around with a camera. Yep, that's it. So focus on engagement, creating engaging content, and engaging content it hasn't got to be fancy at all. Just pictures, you know, carousels of what you've been up to that day or that week. Um, Reels obviously are fantastic for Instagram Uh, and actually they do quite well on Facebook but actually we found that image-based posts on Facebook tend to work better for us but Reels I'll tell you I was having a conversation with someone yesterday when I did a live video in our Facebook group and it got me really thinking actually what is an easy way way for a business owner to create Reels engaging Reels so the type of Reel that works really well at the moment is short clips one second one and a half second clips pieced together Mm -hmm. with a with captions and a voice overlay and a little bit of background music something you can very very easily create directly from your phone Mm -hmm. you just create little snippets of videos and uh, piece them together using instagram itself do a voice recording on your phone place that on add captions easy so what you can do every single day is just throughout the day is just record little clips of you working, mm-hmm. pouring wax melts, packing orders, talking to the camera, uh, whatever it is, go packing up. It can even be personal stuff as well. So taking your dog for whatever it is. And then at the end of that day, in the evening, piece it together, record a video, uh, record a little voice recording and post that on Instagram. That is a very personal behind the scenes piece of content that will typically work quite well on Instagram. And it will help you engage with the customer base that you already have yeah. and so them get to know you a bit better and like like you and trust you as well because you're showing the process, you're showing what you're up to and how the business is going and a little bit about yourself as well. Yeah, exactly. And you you actually did this late last year and earlier yeah. this year for Cozy Romans. I did, yeah. You did a daily little mini daily vlogs. Mm-hmm. They're unedited. They're nothing fancy at Very all. Very raw. Very raw. Um, but they got thousands of views. Yeah, they worked really well. They get thousands of views. And now you look at some of the stuff that's being posted on that particular channel. The reels are getting no views, hardly anything. You know, it just shows that just doing this, being social on social media... Works. Works. There well, is... Sorry, Paul. <laughs> there is this saying that you should spend 80% of your time um, talking about your business and ex- like showing behind the scenes and th- and like more personal things and only 20% of the time selling your products. Yeah, that's it. Well, the thing is, if, you're, if your Instagram profile is optimised properly, and we have a free guide for that, if you haven't seen it on our website or whatever, ping us a message, we'll send you that a little guide on how to optimize your profile properly. So to encourage, basically to encourage people to click your link in the description. Then all you're doing with your daily videos is getting attention and then people will click through to your profile. Yep. Then every now and then, if you have something to sell, you've got this momentum and all of these, these views that you can talk about something to mm-hmm. sell. But when you see accounts that are just posting pictures of their products with a link to it saying, deal now, message me for price whatever it is they just don't do nothing and they never will do nothing no do anything so if that is something you do just stop doing that and create content that actually engages with people yeah you've got to create- I'm quite passionate passionate on this subject as you can tell because it just it just annoys me where where you know we teach these people how to do these things and we have the evidence to show you that it works and then they just continue to do the stuff that they've always done before that don't work mm-hmm 
and it's the evidence. No orders. And, and exactly, and they just, you know, so just do it. And then with regards to frequency, just start with posting every day mm -hmm. in the evening. Do a little behind the scenes vlog every single day. You're not going to get any views or any engagement for the first month, um, but you have to be persistent. Yep, you have to keep showing up. So if you stick to a routine that is easy for you to manage, like once a day, and don't skip out days, just keep doing it, you will build that momentum. And it's better to start with just once a day than overcommit to multiple times a day and not be able to fulfil that. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a croaky voice today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is number one, which is social media marketing. Number two is our email list. And our email list within our businesses still is today the, one of the most valuable things you'll have. Yep. You do a lot of work on emails behind the scenes and all of the flows and the automations and things like that, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And um, you, it, when we had our businesses, we had email lists of over 100,000 people um, pushing towards a 50% open rate, which in e-commerce is unheard of. Um, that you know, getting 50% open rate is really, really difficult. But that comes with time and that comes with nurturing and cleaning your lists, which I'll talk about. Um, and then out of those, probably two or 3% of them will actually click on the link. And then you'd uh, sort of click to link to click link to order conversion rate on emails was about 8%. So it basically meant that every time we sent an email out, we'd probably get about 100 to 120 orders. Which and is that, good. which is very good. Mm -hmm. But you can't just do that every single day. You can't do that. You can't be spammy with that. You have to be very um, thought out. You have to have a thought out process behind your emails. <clears throat> because if you do spam and you keep sending out, oh, buy this, buy this, buy this, your open rates and click-through rates will drop. That's it, yeah. You have to really, your email list, you have to really nurture. Don't just see it as a tool where you can just send emails, send emails. You have to really nurture it. And you'd rather have a small email list with a high engagement rates than you would a large email list with a rubbish engagement rate because yeah. that's that's only going to get worse mm -hmm. the more people don't open your emails and don't engage with them the less likely they're going to land in the inbox that's the thing what's the point of having their details there and their email addresses there if they're not the right sort of customer that's it and to grow your email list so on your website if you're doing a pre-launch or whatever or on your website you want to have some reason for them to to sign up you will have customers that just sign up because they want to get to know you more. They really love your products and your brand. When customers buy from you on your website, you can have, you'll have a, a GDPR um, opt-in form on there as well. So people can sign up that way. But also on your website, you want to have some kind of lead magnet forum. Typically, when you go to websites, you'll see a little pop-up that says, join our email list and get 10% off. Yes. Yeah. They don't work very well because discounts are just every those percent those tiny little minuscule discounts are just everywhere well just think about how many times you open a website you see that click that um pop up you just click the cancel exactly now what you could do is join my email list and receive a free gift with your first order hmm. that's that's in that's very interesting for people uh so when they sign that email address they get an automatic email which says place an order today and we will put a free gift worth whatever in your order People as a thank like you. free. Exactly. And then they they use a specific code on their order. So then when you get that email, that order come through, you'll see the code they've used. You know you know what to do. Mm -hmm. You know that you need to uh, put a free gift in the order. And you can also track the success of it as well that way if you use yeah. as a code. Yeah, absolutely. And just keep doing that, basically. Uh, if you if you sell offline at market events, have an iPad on your on your counter encouraging people to sign up if they sign up they'll get something when they place their next order online that's a really good way of of um getting people getting passing customers at market events and fairs and things to then come back onto your website because mm -hmm. you'll find people that are like on holiday and they walk past a market stall and they, so they won't be in regular at that market stall but they can then become a regular customer via signing up for your emails and if you nurture them that way as well yeah exactly and then what you want to do is nurture that email list. And that is not not by spamming people with yeah. buy this, buy this, buy this. They've signed up to your email list because they want to get this lead magnet. You then have to be very gentle with them so they don't unsubscribe or mark a spam or anything like that. That will happen because it's just natural. But you want as many people as possible not to do that. So 
to do this, you want to have a little automated email flow set up in Klaviyo or MailChimp or whatever system you use. And you want to start off with sending them their whatever it is you've promised them that they'd get for signing up. Then the next day you want to send them a welcome email, which doesn't say anything about buy now, but it's simply pictures of you, pictures of your workshop and an introduction into your brand. So people can start to see the person behind the brand. Mm. That works very well. It definitely does because they can resonate with the person. Then when they see you again on social media, they can get that instant, oh, I recognise their face. Exactly. Then three or four days later, send them another email, which encourages them to join your Facebook group oh. or other other social media platforms. We would always recommend a Facebook group. Yeah. Don't have too many links, too many options and things on these emails for people because they'll just get overwhelmed. You want them to do one thing and that is to join your Facebook group. So you want to make that very encouraging. Give them reasons to want to join it. Why should they join this Facebook group? What are they going to get? What do you do in your Facebook group? Do you hold competitions? Do they get exclusive deals? Well, that's it. Members of your Facebook group will get exclusive products or first time access to new launches and discounts, or whatever. That kind of stuff really is what you want to do. But then one of the key things you need to do, which many people don't do, is that actively clean your email list. And this is to get rid of subscribers that do not engage with any of your emails. Hmm. People don't like to do this because it significantly reduces their email list size and they feel like they are missing out on opportunities. They feel like they're getting rid of people that actively or they're getting rid of email addresses that have tried that have worked hard to get hold of. But that's like carrying dead weight, isn't it? Yeah. You're carrying an email address of somebody that hasn't been active in anything on any of the emails or clicked any of the links for a very long time, and it's just not worth it, and it's har um, harming your um, numbers, isn't it? Your it data. is, yeah, because if your email, because if those people do not engage with your emails or don't even open your emails, then every time you send an email, the email recipients and the email systems know that all of these people aren't going to open it, it will mean that your open rates are a lot less and therefore will harm your deliverability. Yeah. So your your emails won't actually get received by these people. No. Won't be received by these people. That's how it works. Because email accounts can actually automatically block certain email addresses, can't they? Yeah. So you can set things up so um, people that don't haven't opened an email for 90 days, you can um, send them, again, use an automated flow. You can automatically send them an email saying, Hey, I haven't. No I've noticed you haven't opened any of our recent emails. If you want to unsubscribe, click here. Mm -hmm. And then, because these people don't open your emails, chances are they won't open that. Yeah. But people that do open that will probably click the unsubscribe button, mm -hmm. which is fine. And then after that, you'll have a part of that flow is okay. These people haven't still haven't opened any emails from me for a hundred days. I'm going to automatically delete them from my list. Yeah. Just set something like that up. Um, or if you can't do that, then just do it manually. Mm -hmm. And um, that will help keep it nice and clean and fresh. That's it what you want to do. Will. Another thing that you also introduced when we were at Cozy was a weekly newsletter, didn't you, mm. on Sundays? And that was a really fantastic email newsletter, wasn't it? Yeah. And every week you'd just do highlights of what we've been up to this week with photos and just proper behind the scenes. And it was a no way salesy, but it actually turned out to be one of our like really good sales days didn't it and we got like a lot of click throughs to the email um to the website and everything based off that email didn't you yeah those those basic newsletters that are not salesy at all actually generated probably more orders than a sales related email yeah because you're you're just being genuine um, yeah that's what people like this, this real behind the scenes raw yeah so there you go that's one and two done we covered social media marketing and email list up Next, number three is Facebook ads. And this is how we really grew. Um, Facebook ads works. It works it incredibly does. well. We see lots of comments from people saying, Facebook ads don't work for me. Facebook ads don't do... It does work. What Facebook ads do, they put your advert in front of the correct audience, in front of an audience of people. That's what, that's what Facebook ads do. And over time, it continues to optimize itself. So it's putting your ads in front of people that are most likely to take action. But the problem is, if your ad doesn't look compelling or isn't good enough, they're putting it in front of the right people, but it's not resonating with the people. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the thing. There's, there's three elements to this, really. There's more than that, but the three key elements. Firstly, 
have you actually optim correct set, set your ad up properly so it's going to the right audience have you thought about the audience and um you know are, are you targeting the right people secondly your advert itself what is that like do you have your no-brainer offer which we talk about a lot why should people pay attention to it mm -hmm. have something which is like an unbelievable offer for first-time customers that they just cannot ignore you're if they're seeing the ad typically they it's something they would be interested in anyway so then if you've got an unbelievable offer on there as well why wouldn't they click it so that needs to be conveyed in your text the first line in the text and then bullet pointed with emojis throughout the copy the actual graphic that you use you can either have a very short simple video don't make it look like a television advert just talk to the camera if you have to and show the product mm -hmm. have a simple image as well test lots of creative together yeah that's so that's the second thing and the third thing is your landing page the actual when people click on the link when they land on your website are they on the right page is does this page co convince people to place an order do i know that this is a reputable website what payment methods do you take? When am I going to get my order? How much is it? What, what are the images like? Are the images nice and clear? Where do I see the product description? Where's the add to basket button? All of that kind of stuff. So yes, Facebook ads definitely works, but there's a lot more to it than just yeah. the ads. And this worked so well for us. I guess, you know, I had a lot of experience doing this historically for other companies in my previous uh, job and previous um, business that I used to run, digital marketing. So I kind of knew all this anyway. Yeah. But it's still a gamble for a new business. You have to be willing to do it and uh, to invest in it as well. Uh, and we did, and that worked really well for us. So the, the, there's three main areas with regards to Facebook ads that we focused on and I would suggest people focusing on as well. Firstly, is creating that ad for first-time customers that I've just literally just now explained, which the is no -brainer offer. the no-brainer offer. You want something crazy. Buy one, get one free. Buy, buy two, get two free. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. it needs to be something that really convinces them. Yes, you're not necessarily... Chances are you'll probably break even on that or uh, you won't make a great profit on that. But that's okay because hopefully you've learned everything else that we've spoken about and we teach here at the Own Fragrance Academy and put a strong retention strategy in place mm -hmm. because you know that, let's say, or us at Cozy Aromas, we knew that we could afford to break even or even lose money on that first order because 60% of all of our customers would come back and order again. Yep. That's where you'd get the profit is from longevity and from retention. So that's a no-brainer offer. Secondly is retargeting. And this is targeting people that have engaged with that no-brainer offer or engaged with any of your posts, but not actually placed an order yet. So then you retarget them with the same offer, but different messaging, have a more personal video saying, thank you for clicking this link, whatever it is, but send them something, send them, you retarget them with something else to encourage them back to your website. Yeah. Think about what they've already seen and what you could do slightly different to just sort of capture their eye again. Yeah, because people are busy. Mm. They are, you know, they'll see an advert, they'll click on it and then something will happen. Um, whatever it is. The phone will ring or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they do need retargeting and that works very well. You'll get a high percentage of people yeah. convert from that. And then the third thing is, is for Facebook ads, this is, is retention. Mm. And this is something I'll come on to much later on the whole thing. But retention, you can create little campaigns which help to retain customers so you target people that for only ever purchase from you so and these are ads that are just your facebook posts so if you are launched a new product and you've posted it on facebook create an ad from that targeting people that have already bought from you mm -hmm. things like that uh you can add to this every week every time you post it could it doesn't even have to be a sales post but you could turn it into a sales post just by boosting it well not boosting it but by creating turning it into an advert targeting people that have already bought from you that are the three main campaigns that i would set up well, that i did set up and actually worked really well for us they certainly did yeah and it's about like optimizing them and re looking at them and looking at the data and like just changing and tweaking things as and where needed isn't it yeah so you'd have to put the advert up and it'd be in the learning phase to start with wouldn't it and then how long does it typically stay in the learning phase Right. Uh, well, the learning phase lasts seven days, mm -hmm. but it it exits once it's completed 50 of your conversions, 50 conversions. Mm -hmm. So 
conversion could be placing an order. A conversion could be people clicking to your website. Once it's completed 50 of those, it exits the learning phase. And the learning phase is when it's literally learning about your ad and your audience and all of that. Once it's exited the learning phase, it basically means that Facebook knows what your audience are and then can optimize your ads to be focused on the right people. The right people. If it doesn't exit the learning phase, which happens often, then you then chances are you'll it, it will still work for you, but chances are you'll be spending more per customer acquisition. And then if that happens, what you should do is sit down, look at it and think, right, what could I have done better instead? It could be that actually everything is running fine, but your budget is too low to get mm -hmm. that number of conversions in seven days. Yep. So you might need to increase your budget. Um, you might need to completely relook at your landing page. Um, don't just think that Facebook ads don't work for you because it could be a lot more. I say there's lots of elements in involved in there for it to be successful. Yeah. So that's kind of covered Facebook ads, isn't it? I think so. But if anybody needs help with Facebook ads, yeah. there's a little plug opportunity there. So Paul has created the Facebook for Beginners, isn't it? Um, course on our website. So head over to homefragrance.academy, click on courses, and then you can take that course today. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Teach you all the, all the basics for Facebook ads. And the fourth thing that really worked well for us that was in our marketing toolkit was user-generated content. Yes. This is where your customers share photos and comments about your products that you can then use to market your business further. And it's actually quite surprising, or I was surprised right at the beginning of our journey, how well they do. Because yeah. you'll get the customers that you've... Um, have your Facebook group, for instance, this is how we did it. People would post their photos in there and talk amongst themselves about what they're warming, would then use their photos over on our other channel, so Facebook page, Instagram page, etc. And then we'd talk about the product that they're using and thank the customers. And then you'd get people purchase from there because they're like, oh, this sounds amazing. I love that they said this. And, and then people can see them in real life, actually being used by real customers. And you quite often, if you've got an engaged customer, which of course they would be because they're posting that photo in the first place, they'll actually comment on that photo on your normal thread and say, oh, this is my photo. Yeah. And then you'll get somebody say, oh, what did you think of it? And then it can actually keep going and keep going, which then pushes it yeah. in front of more people. That's it. And getting user-generated content is so easy if you have a Facebook group that you have built up and is engaged because people will just post photos in there of what they're yeah. using. And then you can use that content to help promote your business. And you can ask your customers to mm. share photos as well. Yeah, absolutely. So Facebook group to get comments and to get uh, photos and things like that. You And then you can also use reviews. Mm -hmm. So people that have left you Facebook recommendations, Trustpilot reviews, uh, Google reviews, you can use those as well. And yeah. then you need to showcase it all. You can showcase it all in emails by sending out email newsletters or sending out campaigns to people that haven't purchased from you for two months or something like that. Saying, look at all these wonderful reviews we've got. Look at look at this person here is using this, blah, blah, blah. You can then do the same on social media. Uh, we used to have like a weekly roundup as such, didn't we, where we would post a carousel of just what people have been using in our Facebook group. That does two things. It encourages people to join our Facebook group yep. and it also shows that we're quite popular and people like using our products. Mm -hmm. And another thing you can use the reviews for as well is if you are targeting wholesale, you can use them, your reviews in there to show that people really love your products. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. You, you'll you get reviews and you'll get these posts and stuff like that. You just need to use them. Yeah. Um, and actually here at the Home Fragrance Academy, we need to, we do, need to that. do that ourselves really, don't we? We've got some lovely reviews and we need to start showcasing those a bit more. Um. So yeah, use generate generate content. Don't don't sort of don't take it for granted. Yeah, don't take it for granted and don't dismiss it. Don't yeah. overlook it. It's very powerful. The images might be pretty poor, but that doesn't matter because they're real images from a real customer. That it it works. Yeah. Number five was influencers. Mm -hmm. So this was part of our marketing toolkit. We didn't do a huge amount of this, but when we did. We had mixed experiences, but actually they could they can work really well, especially for like wax kind. Yeah, it worked very well with wax kind, didn't it? So we'd find the right sort of accounts that we thought would 
I've got, got the right sort of following and an engaged following as well and spark up a conversation with them and see if they'd be interested in receiving the products for free in return for doing a reel, posting on their stories, tagging us in posts, etc. So you have to work out exactly what you would want from the influencer and what they're going to get in return for it, such as the free products and contact as many as you think you know as many as you can really it's a bit of a numbers game isn't it and then just try and spark up conversations so in our industry how would you find the right type of account and what would you determine is the right type of account so in our industry or in the home fragrance industry i'd look for like home accounts so home decor and so you could look on different like shops so like neptunes in colchester for instance all the people that follow them because they've got some really nice upmarket kind of people they'd follow that whoever follows that account have a look through and click on their profiles and review their content and have a look at the way they take their photos their videos and their engagement and then go through like that I think that's a good way of doing what, it and then what contact the likes of Neptunes or contact the followers no the actual followers mm. sorry I should have explained that a bit better yeah so you contact the followers you want to look at ones that have got sort of 5,000 followers something mm. like that you want the micro influencers but it's more about the engagement so when you click on the photos have they got lots of likes lots of comments um, are they having conversations with their audience and then just send them a message saying well, I love your account keep it personal yeah. I love this particular photo of your daughter you took on the 5th of May mm -hmm. that's a lovely looking dress that she's wearing um, I, I really feel that your account would um, benefit from our, our products so far from having some kind of collaboration mm. I'd love to send you some products for free in exchange for a couple of posts and a story yeah see what they say that's a numbers game you want to contact 100 of them and maybe 5 will say yes but that works it does and you get some really lovely content that way usually because yeah. the people you're choosing are the sort of people that take really lovely photos and videos so you can reuse that content mm -hmm. plus also you're getting the benefit from the uplift of their audience yeah um and it just just works mm -hmm. you can't just do one and hope it's going to transform your business this, if you're going to do this you want to have it as a strategy you want to be sending out 10 product 10 10 sort of products a week to these influencers mm -hmm. um that's a really good way to grow your business um yeah i think i wish we would have done more of that actually yeah but that's that's a fantastic way of doing it and number six is retention. That was part of our marketing toolkit as well. And I briefly touched on that with regards to Facebook ads, didn't I? You did, yeah. So retention is basically the amount of customers that come back and order from you time and time again. Mm -hmm. They're your loyal repeat customers. We worked really hard with this at Cozy and we got up to 60% returning customer rate, which is quite high, especially at scale. Mm -hmm. so in in a i think I, i've done this in, in one of my courses didn't i i think it was in a three month or six month period we had like thirty thousand orders and um you know almost twenty thousand of those were from repeat customers which is amazing so trying to do that at scale if you're very small and you're getting 100 orders a week uh, 100 orders a month you would expect quite a high retention rate mm -hmm. um, not straight away of course this is something you can start to measure after about six months but you want to get that nice and high anything above 40 percent is good um, and then what that basically allows you to do is you, you need to understand these numbers so if if let's say 50 percent of all of your customers come back and order from you again that means you can afford to spend a little bit more money to acquire a customer yeah it means you know exactly how much you can spend doesn't it exactly you need to work out the numbers your average order value your profit margin etc and then once you've done that you can then decide okay i know for instance i can now spend 20 pounds to acquire a customer because i know they're going to come back and order again and actually i know that on average all of my customers over a course of a year two year period will place five orders with me mm -hmm. if they if they place more than one order i know on average they'll place five Yep. And let's say it's a £20 average order value. That's £100 you've got there, £100. And let's say you're working to an 80% margin. That's £80 profit. Let's minus a bit of Facebook ads and stuff. Let's say £60 profit. So you know that you could easily afford to pay £20 or £30 to acquire that customer because you know on average... They're going to spend. You're going to you're going to earn sixty pounds in profit from them. Yeah, they're having um, 
having the data there and understanding it means that you can make the best decision on how much to market yeah. and you know just get as many people in as possible that's it and to increase your attention is so much easier than what you probably think yeah. and it's a it's a mixture of everything we've just spoken about mm -hmm. so it's doing the engaging facebook ads sorry it's doing the engaging social media mm -hmm. marketing uh, doing the posts on there, which shows you behind the scenes of you making your products, really showing people how much time, time, effort and care you put into making the products. It's engaging directly with your audience. Engaging directly with them, going live, mm -hmm. talking to them, doing live, live shops, growing and nurturing your email list, having retention campaigns in Facebook ads, yeah. sharing user generated content because the piece of content that you're sharing from a customer, that customer will know how much you appreciated them. That will help to just boost their loyalty just a little notch, and then they'll come back and buy from you again. Building your email automated systems as well, your automated flows, that's quite an in-depth topic. I've got loads of training on this that I've done. So um, come and come to our website and we can teach you all about that. But that's the thing you want to do and most importantly the thing that worked so well for us was our facebook group it certainly did it was a fantastic place because we had all of our customers in there we had at one point we had almost ten thousand people in there didn't we yeah and they would be talking about the products and sharing everything that they've been warming so that's where we'd get our user generated content from a lot but also you can engage with them properly and you can answer their questions in real time as quick as they're posting them. You can ask their opinion on things, find out what they want for upcoming launches and just talk to them. Yeah. Like every evening at seven o'clock, I used to put up a post about something to do with anything to do with the day, whatever I've been up to. That's it should right. be a picture of Willow, our border collie, and just something really personal. And it's a proper connection. Yeah. And all of this is so much easier than what you probably think mm. but it just takes time and discipline yeah. you have to stick with it you have to keep going keep doing it when it looks like nothing's happening how often do we see comments from people saying oh it didn't work and like, well, how I've long posted on social it? media so instagram does nothing for me does it do nothing for you what have you done oh i posted four times in the past week and i didn't post again what? Just, yeah. just stick with it. Post, post daily. Mm -hmm. Do the, the nice behind the scenes content. Do it. Don't think about your followers or anything like that in the in the first instance. Just get into the habit of doing it because you know eventually it's going to work. Hmm. Once you've done it for a month, two months, three months, all of your competitors will have dropped off. Yeah. We know this because we see it all the time. Your competitors wouldn't have done it. They wouldn't keep up with you. So just keep doing it. You're straight away. You're ahead of most of your most of everybody else that does this mm -hmm. stuff you need to outlast everybody else that's it so stick with it guys and then number seven the final thing is uh is actually something that everybody that i've seen overlooks and that's analyzing your data analyzing how campaigns have run looking at your results of your campaigns your emails your facebook ads your social media posts and learning from them now, if you have all of this, you always have this data available, but if you don't look at it and adapt, you won't be able to succeed, will you, essentially? No. And you will, next time you have a product launch again, you need to look at all the data and work out, okay, this worked last time, but this didn't. So for this one, I'm going to change and try this so that you can adapt yeah. things around. Yeah, but you need to sort of, they need to know, people need to know what they need to look at to understand if it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And what do they need to look at to understand if it does work? So on Instagram, you can go into your profile and you can look at data. You can look at your most recent posts and you can do it by, I think it's engagement rates or yeah. something like that. And you can see, and they're listed in order. It tells you right at the top, these are the ones that got the most engagement. And at the bottom, these are the ones that didn't. So the ones that didn't, don't make any more of those. The ones that did, make more like that. Yeah. You just, can look at seven days, 30 days, and yeah. 90 days. That's so simple, isn't it? Just mm -hmm. recreate content that is performing well. Recreate it in different formats. If it's a reel you did that that worked really well, do it as a carousel. Re-record the reel, but use different B-roll footage, yep. stuff like that. On emails, you want to look at click-through rates, open rates. So open rates, you want to be above 30%. 
ideally above 40% if you can, but it's hard. Click-through rates, you want to be above 1%, 2%, something like that. If you can get it above that, great. If it's if you run campaigns that are less than that, then why, why aren't they opening your emails? Look at the subject line. Mm-hmm. Um, when they, you need to test different subject lines to make it so compelling that they have to click on the link because they're missing out if they don't. Then when they're on the on your email, is your click-through rate really low? If so, why? Have a look at it. Where's your call to action button? Your call to action needs to be nice and high. You really only want to have one call to action on the page. Don't have a don't have an email full of links because people won't know what to click. Don't have an email that's full of text unless it's an email newsletter, of course. Mm-hmm. If it's a sales related one, you want a beautiful image. You want to very sh- quickly. You want to say this is what this product is. Want to find out more? Click here. Click here. Or this is the offer we've got on this product. Want to read more about it? Click here. Simple as that. It's that kind of stuff. On Facebook ads as well, you want to look at your frequency rate. And the frequency rate is the number of people on, oh, sorry, the number of times on average everybody sees this ad. If it's upwards of four or five for a for a first time customer, um, then you probably want to tweak that slightly. You want to narrow down the audience or sorry, expand your audience or create new ads. Uh, but for but for retargeting ads, you want that to be four, five, six. Um, and then retention will be the same as well. So there's all that stuff. You just need to look at your data, yeah. understand, try to really analyze what's what's happening. Mm-hmm. And then it just allows you, it just guides you on what to create. And all of these little things that you do will, over time will have such an impact. They certainly will. If you make all the small tweaks and then your next launch will be hopefully a lot better yeah. and then every time you improve something a bit more and then a bit more and then you've hit your secret source almost yeah exactly so there you go they are the seven things that were in our marketing toolkit that worked very well for us mm-hmm. and i think if you implemented these things and made some small tweaks on what you're doing you'll see some positive results we did we Definitely. didn't we've we've we had we ran three different home fragrance businesses and we did this in all of them and it works. We're doing it with the Home Fragrance Academy, and it works. Um, yeah, implement it into yours and see what happens. And make sure you let us know how it goes as well, because we love hearing how you get on with all the impl- all the changes you implement as well. Yeah, that was that was a really good session. But you have got another plug in here. We need to add in for the retention engine. Yes, I created another course. That's this how... one is a free course as well. Oh, that's how good I was last week. I created another course, mm-hmm. and yeah, this is a free course, completely free. Just go to our website and you can take it. It's called the Retention Engine, and that's a thirty-three minute course where I talk about the five key strategies we implemented uh, to increase retention rates in our business and then how you can do the same as well. A very short course, completely free, head over to homefragrance.academy, take that course and let me know how you get on. Exactly. And we can't wait to hear all the results. Absolutely. Thanks everybody for listening. And we can't wait to speak to you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.